Welcome back to Fire to Fork. All right, I am out in the bush by myself. Well, sort of by myself, I've got my dog. And I've decided it's time to get the walk back out. So garlic chili noodles tonight. Now I've seen a lot of these on the internet and they're all a bit vegan for me. I'm okay with something being vegan if it's naturally vegan. I'll give you an example. This is vegan, I assume. There's no real reason for an IPA to have any hops. Sorry, have any hops, lots of hops. To have any animal products in it. Sure, milk stout, but not this. But I tend to find in my stir fries and things, a little bit of, you know, flesh goes a long way. So I'm gonna show you my version of a sort of 15 minute, quick stir fry noodle thing to do at camp. Because I'm solo, the tiniest little packet of udon noodles. Doesn't mean I'm only gonna do uh, the enough amount of stuff to go with this packet. It just means that when I have more, I'll cook another three minute batch of udon noodles to put with it. So let's get started. First thing is garlic. For garlic, you want your smallest knife and you kind of want a bigger knife as well. It's weird. So you want your smallest nice, uh, knife for precision. Actually, I'm just gonna go the big knife and I'll just clumsy it. So, explode your garlic everywhere, drop it everywhere. Okay, so I want about, look, it's a Korean dish. There's no such thing as too much garlic. Go two, four, six, eight. Go eight cloves, they're big cloves. So we've got eight cloves. If you want to put more in, you can. It's pretty much no such thing as too much garlic in, in Korean food. I know I'm using udon noodles for Korean food, but they just work with this dish. Now, as usual, somewhere in this video, there is going to be a code word. I'm going to give away two books this week. I'm going to give away one to the person who comes up with, oh, sorry, to someone who mentions the code word. I'm gonna give another, so do a separate comment for this, don't put the code word in with the, this other comment, to the top voted little title thing. You know how underneath in my videos, I, I don't know what the title is for this one, but you know, Barefoot Bushman or Can't Catch Fish, you know, something like that. Those little titles. I spent a lot of time thinking of those titles and I'd love some input from you guys for some funny ones. Uh, I got some really good ones off Instagram the other day and uh, when I ask for suggestions, and I'd love to hear YouTube's suggestions. So yeah, you can technically win two books if you're lucky and creative. All right, dust up this garlic. We'll give it a quick smash first. All right, let's um, satisfy the internet police with a tea towel here. Screw it, paper towel will do. Wet paper towel underneath my breadboard. So it doesn't slide around because that actually even annoyed me, which I think is maybe the first time. Next, spring onions, scallions, green onions, whatever you want to call them, depending on where you're from in the world. What we're going to do is get the, um, we'll get the stalks off. It's incredibly easy to grow in your back garden, by the way. Just plant these guys. They grow like anything. So now, right now, I want the white parts. Cool. Grab some cooking oil. Okay, I'm gonna chuck these all into the fry pan now, because that heats up in like two seconds on the fire, and it just makes it easier than putting it on down there. And we're gonna start on the rest of it. So next we want to make a little sauce. Start with chili flakes. So we're going to use about two tablespoons of chili flakes, which is quite a lot. It is a chili noodle though. Then we want about two tablespoons of soy sauce, a dash of mirin or cooking, uh, cooking wine. So about a tablespoon of that, about a tablespoon of oyster sauce, Oyster sauce, by the way, doesn't taste anything like oysters. It's a sweet and salty sauce. Then sugar. So we want one tablespoon of sugar. 
I always get these little sachets, two, two teaspoons for one tablespoon. Two and a half if you're in America, I believe. How's that? Even your tablespoons are bigger. Um, I get little sachets just in case I break the bag of sugar. So I find to have sachets all over the car. I don't really want sugar all over the car. That's how you get ants. Okay, that is all good. Now, you'll see it's sort of a runny-ish paste. I, do you think it needs a tiny bit more oyster sauce? I think go two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Just get that consistency right. God. Get out. <laughs> and this is not traditional, but I'm just going to chuck a little bit of vinegar in there. Um, maybe a teaspoon of vinegar. Um, I just find that cuts through that sweetness quite well. It doesn't take away from it, it just complements it. Let's have a quick taste. Yeah, tastes really good actually. Okay. Ooh, I might use was a spoon. Go to the fire and get cooking. That smell, that garlic is just unreal. So you can see this basically immediately has some colour on it. Great. Time to chuck in the pork. Make sure you get this little sucker. I've just got some water on there boiling. I haven't used this wok in a while, and I don't know why. I love using a wok on a fire because it's so forgiving. The high sides just means stuff doesn't fall out. It's bloody brilliant. Okay, let's chuck in that sauce. We want this sauce to sort of fry a bit, but just because it's got a lot of sugar in it, you've got to be careful not to overcook it. It smells like it's burning, take it off. We want this to be quite a dark color at the end. Now I've had someone actually recently be like, why are you using that wind reflector thing, this thing, when you're not, um, when it's not windy? It's not, it's not at all windy here. These actually aren't for wind. These are to reflect heat and light back at you in the dark. Uh, we sell them on the website. They are beautifully made. This one's filthy, come in a nice canvas bag. But uh, yeah, they're not to stop wind. They are to reflect heat and they work phenomenally. Took the guys from Aussie Arvos out and showed them. And I showed them the difference between using it and not. They were shocked. I reckon you need half the size fire when you use one of those compared to not. Only reason we made one is because we, there was no one that we had found at the time who was making anything that did the job we wanted to. Would love some dark soy sauce in this because it would darken the appearance, but I'm not gonna do that just because I like to keep things simple and I don't think it adds that much of a variance in flavor. I'm a big one for removing ingredients, not adding them. Now, I'm gonna leave this a bloody alone so that it starts to brown up and crisp on the edges. So this is an old hillbilly wok I've had for years. Um, the reason I carry it, folding handle. Good for a wok. Oop, light's gone out of battery. Whew. <laughs> good technical issues there. Oh, it's good. That forced me to have the patience to let it brown up nicely. And I left my glove over there. All right, there's that burning smell I'm trying to avoid. So let's get that off. That can chill out for a second. And I'll get this packet of udon and throw it in the water. This just needs three minutes. And boiling water. Okay, what I will say is it does need a little bit more sauce. I just put a bit of water in this earlier. I'm just gonna put that in there and stir it around. And then, what it really needs is a good slog of sesame oil to bind everything together. Love 
I love sesame oil. But you don't want to put it on too early. I'd love something redder. Like I'd love a Korean chili paste or something. I got gotcha. you. Ooh, actually. I could use it as crunchy chili. I'm gonna put it in the end. All right, while I wait for those two. That to boil and sort out. I'm just gonna get some finishing spring onions. The reason I'm adding this extra liquid in there is because it needs to have something to grip onto the noodles with. If it's just pork, it won't work. Okay, how's that look? A bit more. Last thing it needs is some sesame seeds right here. And I'm a fan of serving noodles on a plate. Don't know why. Just, uh, no, nah, I'm going to do it in a bowl for this one, actually. Because I need to give it a really good stir. If it was all stirred in, I wouldn't. Noodles should be done. Some of the finished product, lots of the oil and goodness at the bottom. I've seen lots of ways of doing this, including like frying, you pour hot oil into the chili and stuff like that. I know that's a traditional way, but this one, I don't know, it just makes more sense to me. I've seen it done like this, and this one just made the most sense, and it was porkier. All right, it's not very photogenic or B-rollogenic. Videogenic? I don't know what the word is there. But still gonna get some gratuitous to roll once I've added this. Oh crap! Doesn't matter. I did forget an ingredient, but I'm just gonna leave it out. It's alright, it was only some green stuff. I can't remember who I saw on YouTube. It was a Perth or someone person using this crunchili stuff. Um, oh, that's not the right lid. Uh, but I've been buying it for ages. Dunsborough, yeah, it must have been a Perth person. I've been buying it for ages. It's really good stuff, no affiliation. Never spoken to them. Just bought it straight at the supermarket because I like it. I like supporting small companies. All right. That's phenomenal. That's actually phenomenal. Wow. Oh crap. Oh, don't fit this to your dog because there's a lot of chili in it. So if you like chili, make this. If you don't like chili, don't make this. It's chili noodles. I love chili. Mm, okay. The noodles are incredibly soft and creamy and delicious. Um, the crunch from this is amazing, as well as from the sesame seeds. The pork is sweet and salty and a bit spicy and just so tasty, so tasty. I wish it was a different color. It's a little bit brown and brown. That's it. That's the only criticism I have of it. Flavor-wise, flavor it's amazing. I'm already excited about making more udon noodles and adding that to it. That's awesome. All right, test. Does it go with beer? Obviously it does. Yeah, it's delicious with beer. Absolutely delicious. Would it go better with something else? No, actually beer's perfect. It's like beer and curry. <clears throat> There's no uh, nothing else that goes as well with curry as beer. Cheers, I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to comment the code word and think of some stupid names for me. Cheers. Mm. Mm.